In this video, we are going to be going through the standard offspin bowling action. Offspin or finger spin is bowling action in which the fingers go over the ball and as a right-hander you turn it into the right-hander batsman and away from the left-hander batter. If you bowl left arm orthodox, which is also finger spin, it turns into the left-hander and away from the right-hander. First up, we are going to be looking at how to grip the ball. Obviously there will be some slight variations from person to person that might help them better with it. But the standard one is where, oh, look at Zena's lovely hand there, gripping the ball with the index finger on the top and the ball snuggled into the middle finger, trying to keep the thumb away from the ball because this will inhibit a bit of turn. From this grip, what we are going to be looking to do is trying to use the index finger to go over the top of the ball to impart turn and as that is happening, using the middle finger to pull down on the ball to give us a few more revs on the ball which can help us with spin, bounce, dip and drift. Some added knowledge from Zenden is this used to not be convention but people are now using the wrist to get a little bit more onto the ball because obviously you want to have as many weapons as possible and getting more revs on the ball gives you that extra weapon. Now that we know how to grip the ball, let's look at how we're going to release the ball from our hand, making sure that the fingers work over the top with the hand going forward to allow you to have that forward and side spin on the ball. Only having forward spin is going to make it come out as a toppy, which gives you more bounce and more dip, but doesn't get you any turn. Turning it too much sideways can take away from a bit of the turn, but it also takes away from the dip and the drift, which is one of your weapons. So you want somewhere in the middle to try and get all of them together to make you that bit more dangerous. A good little checkpoint to have is to see which way the seam is rotating. If it's rotating towards a leg slip or a 45 region, you're probably close to being to where you want to be. So work on that and try and get it to come out as smoothly and cleanly as possible. We have noticed that over 70% of you have not subscribed to our channel. Let's change that today. Hit that subscribe button and let's be revolutionary. Moving on to alignment. Our general rule for alignment is to make sure that when you're landing, your feet, your hips and your shoulders are all aligned towards your target. Two reasons. This gives you time through the action, which is going to help you spin the ball. And also, we don't want to get injured, so a mixed action might cause a back injury, which will keep you off the field of play. And if you're on the side of the field, you can't be turning the ball on the field. Moving on to the bowling action through the crease. We're going to move in segments from the top to the bottom of the body to make sure that we know how each part works together in this massive thing that we call a bowling action. Starting with the head, we want to make sure that the eyes are nice and level into the crease. This allows us to have a good view of where we want to bowl, but also the head controls how the body moves. If you're falling over, the body's going to fall away, which could take control and the alignment out of sync, which is going to affect our ability and our effectiveness with the ball. Moving forward, we're going to look at our front arm. What you want this arm to do is you want it to go in a nice big circle going forward where a lot of cross bowlers tend to pull in with the arm, we can actually go through nice and long with the straight arm through the action. This is going to allow us to spend more time through the action to give us time to spend on the ball with our fingers to impart that spin on it. Moving from there, obviously that we've got our front arm circle, we now need to focus on our back arm circle. So our bowling hand. With our bowling hand, we want a nice full circle to help with getting the revs over it. Now what's important is with your release point, that's going to determine the pace. You don't want to then push the ball out quicker or slower. You just get more over revs if you want to slow it down or more side revs if you want to go a bit quicker. With this, you want to make sure that the arm is quite high and vertical, but you don't want to go past the vertical line from where your front foot lands up. Because once you go past there, you can't get too many revs. At the same time, you don't want your arm going too wide because then you come under the ball and that cuts out the good revs that we really want. At the same time, as you're completing this action, you want a nice pull through with our arm past our front leg. This allows us to get over the ball and through the action. If we slow this down too much, we're not going to get enough revs on the ball and we're not going to be as effective because the batter is going to see it and be able to play you like a medium pacer. Obviously, looking at the shoulders, we want a vertical rotation where we go over the top of the action. As soon as we go on a horizontal rotation, we come around the ball and then the revs don't get over, which isn't going to allow the ball to bite into the surface to give us the best possible outcome. Moving down, we spoke about shoulders and hips earlier. They need to still be aligned in the same line because you don't want the body to turn past itself. This can be a bit challenging when we are looking at our back leg. With this leg, we want to drive through nice and close to the front leg and through the crease. As this is happening, because we've got a vertical rotation, the hips and shoulders are both going to rotate in a vertical manner, staying in line and allowing us to get through the action. With this drive, with the back leg, we're going to be on the front foot, making sure that we get nice and up on the ball of our feet to get as much height as possible. This could help us with a bit more bounce, but at the same time, it forces us to get through the crease that much better. 
As the back leg drives through, you want it to land about 180 degrees from its starting point because that allows us to really complete our action. From there, you're going to jump off your back leg and into a catching position to give yourself the best chance to take a return catch and take that wicket for your team. Now that we've gone through the entire action, we can now look at a couple of tips or tricks that you could use to better help yourself. For instance, if you are undercutting the ball, so you're not getting over the ball and it's not turning as much and it's coming out as a forced slider, what you can look to do is you can try and keep your pinky forward at the point of release because this is going to force us to get over the ball. If that is not working and doesn't feel comfortable thinking about that, as you're bowling, try and imagine the back of your hand brushing the side of your pocket of your front leg because that makes sure that we get in through the action. That will make sure that our release point is quite good and that we get over. This video would not be complete if we did not give you some draws to help you get more revs on the ball. As stated earlier, revs equals all of your weapons as a spinner. So let's get into it. First up, to help you with more revs, we can start nice and basic. You don't actually need a lot of space for the straw. You just need some flat ground and an indicator on the ground, a line, some chalk, whatever it is. You can throw over the top of the ball with your action to try and get it to bounce past it so you can see how many revs are on. Or you can throw under the ball. Both of these are to represent your fingers working over the ball and to get you comfortable with it. The line is there so that you can see how much it's turning and you can keep working to try and get it to turn more. Next up, we are going to look to throw under arms, trying to rip the ball as much as possible with the grip that we spoke about earlier. Try and pitch it on off and let the ball hit legs down. This you also don't need a lot of space, about half a pitch length will do. Ah, that thing got very loud, it sounded like it was coming here. It's going the other way. So with half a pitch length, it's nice and easy, you can throw. The important thing here is to try and get as many revs on the ball as possible. So don't go too far where you feel you're losing your shape by throwing it too far. Get it there, pitch on off, hit leg, and dominate. Third up, what we're going to look at do is we're going to go further back now. You can even go full pitch for this. We're going to look to throw the ball down with the spinner's grip while trying to rag the ball as much as possible. Throwing helps us just really focus on the hand movement through the ball and getting the fingers to work over it. Also making sure that we get the fingers in the right place to get the correct angle of revs on the ball. Remember, we want that seam to point to 45 or leg slip because that is where we're going to be our most dangerous. Once you are comfortable with this, we can move on to the fourth and final part of this, where you are going to be standing in the crease and bowling with a drive through. See if we can now impart as many revs as possible from a bowling action without momentum so that we have control and that we can see the improvements. Once you get this right, we move on and you go and dominate in a cricket match. Thank you for watching. We hope that you did enjoy. Also, a massive shout out to all our members who are making shoot these videos even more possible. And finally, earlier in the video, we mentioned the pinky tip for offspin. Check it out over here.